so um, as a clinician practicing in Seattle, you know, I, I appreciate this discussion of diversity, but the population of my clinic that's not served are Asians. And they're not incentivized by NIH for collection. They're not an underrepresented minority. But in genetics, there really is a dearth of data. And it really impacts my ability to care for these patients. There's no Asians in the exome variant server. There are Asians in XAC, but you don't know their diagnoses necessarily. And that data is a little bit harder to use. And you know, I think as we look at diversity and we look at the percentage of the population that's Asian, we should find a way to do a better job to serve that community as well. So, hi, I'm Eliseo Perez Estable. I'm at the National Institute of Minority Health and Health Disparities. Just started a month ago. So I just want to make, I'm, I'm the director, yes. Um, <laughs> I, want to, I want to emphasize three points on this topic, which I think are really important. Um, it, it's a demographic reality. The United States is changing. We have probably over 50% of the population will be, quote, minority within our lifetime. And so we no longer will be minorities. Number two, look around this room. How many people of color are here? Not many, uh, particularly Latino or African American. And I think that's a, a priority as well, has been addressed as well. We do need more diverse workforce. And I think Bob is right, he implied. We, I think we do have experience that when we lead projects, we are more successful at getting minorities enrolled in our studies. So I think that's a real priority. And finally, I think the biology is critical. Um, I, when we talk to populations, um, they're, they're interested in this. They're interested in genetics. Yes, there's a fear about, oh, Tuskegee and all the other stuff that's happened. But people are want to know. They want to be on board. So there's no reason to exclude the populations on this aspect, Asians as well as Latinos and African Americans. So I really think that, we, uh, that this is a, a really critical topic. And what uh, Dr. Bustamante was suggesting, I think, is a, is a real positive uh, recommendation. Thank you. So I uh, wanted to come back to the talk that Jim gave. It was a very nice talk. And just to. I might, I might have interpreted the summary of the data that you gave slightly differently in the sense that I might have inverted, um, I, the, obviously, the issues of uh, poverty and maybe not having well-paying jobs and uh, having to pay more for gas and being sicker. I mean, those are obviously issues. But one could argue that the fundamental distinction of uh, going out to a rural clinic, which is predominantly, in this case, African American, and being able to now all of a sudden enroll as well as you could in uh, the kind of tertiary care setting, the, the, the one, all those same issues are there. They're still sicker. They still don't have well-paying jobs. They, you know, still, they still have to travel probably even farther. Uh, but the one distinction is probably trust. It's, you know, they, they, um, you know, they, know, they know their community um, health clinic. They, I'm sure that the doctor that's out there, they love that guy. And, and I know this from my own extended family. and friends. You know, I just know how this goes. So I think the trust thing is crucial. And, and I, it's not just about um, enrollment. It's about the ability to take actions. Because you know, the very fact that patients are sicker, and so if they're going to have variants that sort of dictate one line of care or another, sooner or later they're going to have to come into a tertiary care center to get either a referral or a procedure or what have you. So we have to kind of embrace that grill in the room. And you know, I hate to say it because I, I I work in a largely majority place, which I love dearly. But it's a it's a big issue, and I've heard people tell me, you know, when people come to this imposing, whitewashed, you know, luxurious looking place, and they don't see anybody that looks like them, and maybe the people aren't quite as friendly, they may not want to come back the second time, especially if their job, you know, would be so. Now the, the flip side is that the good news is that you know building trust is doable and yes I am I totally buy I'm I'm with the expanding the diverse workforce but you know trust can be forged it, it doesn't necessarily matter uh, you know there has to be sort of a willingness and kind of a an investment in the in the health center to kind of say you know we're really going to take the extra mile to reach these patients and it can happen and that will all of a sudden make it uh, much not not it's not going to make it as straightforward as it is to enroll majority population. But I do think that, you know, kind of focusing on that 
will often make these other issues uh, less uh, of a concern. On the other hand, if we don't, it will remain kind of a gorilla in the room that prevents us from being able to do the kind of uh, research that will ultimately benefit the, as many populations as possible. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, and I think you're right. I think that um, the, the major determinant that allowed us to get uh, much better uh, enrollment and participation um, at the clinic in Eastern North Carolina is that issue of trust. And, and like you say, the tertiary centers that most of us practice at, they're big, inconvenient, scary, anonymous kind of places, right, where, where it's hard for people to even see, you know, with rotating teams of physicians and nurses. Um, where, but, but what that means is that we're going to make the most inroads in those places where the trust is more easily built. I don't think we're going to change the culture of our giant tertiary um, centers real quickly, but we can go to these more community-based places. It's just that, like I mentioned, there are particular obstacles to working with the community-based places because everything from IRBs to um, to their workflow and their workload are challenges. But we got to do it because that's I think that's where we can most easily build trust. 